Okay, we are indeed live right now on YouTube. Welcome everyone to another edition of the Four Guys of Quarters podcast. This is episode number 179 for August 23rd, 2018. I'm one of your hosts, the only one with a video yet again, Inferno 217. We have the other two jamokes with us, but on Xbox party chat, so no video associated. Clowns uh, has stepped away briefly, but he'll be back in just a little bit. Uh, but making his 179th straight appearance, he is in fact here at the moment. ZBCI Assassin, what's going on, bud? Hello. Wow. All right. That was a little bit different than what? than usual, you know. <laughs> yeah, gotta change it up. Gotta change Every it up. once in a hundred podcasts. <laughs> there you go <laughs> well anyway this is actually number 179 so you know on 279 we're gonna get another change apparently so essentially what's being yep. insinuated but um nonetheless enough mark about the that calendars. mark mark the calendars whenever that'll be a couple years probably um nonetheless let's get into the topics because we got a few tonight um, mostly centered around Gamescom, stuff that was announced there. Of course, that's going on this week. Uh, almost over in uh, Cologne, Germany, unfortunately. I would like to go at some point, check that out. Um, I wonder how much it is for flights from Boston over to over to Germany and hotels and stuff. I would love to, love to find that out sometime and, and go to that because... Um, I've always thought about going to like EGX, which is in London. And obviously, I speak the language a little bit better than than German, which I don't speak at all. But um, nonetheless, a lot of people, uh, you know, speak English at this event. So not like I would be lost. But anyway, um, Daz wants to know what happened to Assassin's Pick. Uh, that's his gamer pick, actually. We're pulling this right from Xbox this week. Hopefully next week we're back at it with uh, with videos. But this week, back with static images for the for the guys here. Um, but anyway, topics this week. We've got, obviously, everything Xbox, everything Microsoft announced at Gamescom. We've got uh, some new controllers, both from Microsoft and Sony. Some great Sony ones. We'll get into that in a little bit. We'll talk about uh, some other announcements at Gamescom, not console-related necessarily at this point in time. But PC gaming related, some new graphics cards from NVIDIA, the the leader in graphics card technology. Um, we'll get into what they announced, uh, a little bit of pricing on that kind of stuff, and how it compares to what's out there right now. We'll, we'll get our thoughts on that. That'll be kind of on the quick end because, honestly, as you'll see, um, not really a ton out there at this time. I think um, the way NVIDIA announced it is more or less, um, you know, not comparing it to what's currently out there it's kind of like a new venture into graphics technology and you'll see why in a little bit uh what else do we have battlefield 5 what the hell is going on with battlefield you know uh we'll get into that because i know we're all passionate about the battlefield franchise we're playing the hell out of battlefield one still and uh we're feeling bad we're feeling bad right now for the battlefield franchise and we'll get into why uh, it looks like doom and gloom right now, according to consumers, according to analysts, according to a lot of people. Uh, it's, it's not looking good right now for Battlefield, and we're afraid of what's going to happen to the franchise. Uh, but nonetheless, and uh, last but not least, another thing that was not announced but maybe leaked by a couple sources about an all-access kind of financing program. It looks like it's going to be available only in the U.S., but uh, at least to start, but it's looking like we're going to get some financing options for Xbox consoles and uh, stuff like Games of Gold and um, and Games Pass. So, all right, before we get into this, uh, let's go ahead and just mention, of course, that we are one of the Inner Circle Network affiliates. There are a few Inner Circle affiliate podcasts. You should check them all out. They're all excellent. Um, we've been on a couple uh, they're, they're good, good quality stuff. And we appreciate the inner circle network for bringing us on as an affiliate, because that is a recognition that we put out some good content and we're excited what the future holds for that. And, uh, pretty soon we'll have stuff to announce about that. And, um, yeah, so keep up the good work affiliates, keep up the good work for guys pound it. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I just did that. Anyway, um, what do you want to start with first, Assassin? I mean, I, I figured. I, do you want to just pull the band aid and, and go for the battlefield thing right away, or or, or what do you want to do? You want to wait on that because I know that's a sensitive topic for you. Um, battlefield's fine. When comes back, should probably hit that on uh, those PC part things. Yes. Yes, indeed. Yeah. I was planning on starting with that, but Clowns isn't here, so. Um, oh, I'm here. Oh, Clowns is here. Okay, so. Uh, let's start with the. Forget the, that. The graphics cards. Let's. Or whatever. Yes, yes. So. New graphics cards announced. I know Clowns is becoming a little bit of a PC enthusiast here with uh, some high end parts. I'm kind of like in the mid high end tier here in terms of uh, my enthusiasm for this kind of stuff, but. Um, nonetheless, we've got some new graphics cards from NVIDIA, and take a look at these numbers. 4K HDR, 60 FPS with ease with the new cards, with the at least the mid-range one, or the high mid-range one, the GTX, or the RTX, I should say. 1080, uh, getting over 60 FPS in all these popular games. We're looking at uh, Final Fantasy XV, the PC edition, at 60 FPS, and it just goes up from there. You know, popular games, Call of Duty World War II. Um, 93 frames per second, 4K HDR. That's pretty, pretty impressive. Um, we've got, uh, Battlefield 1. We were just talking about Battlefield 5, uh, just a bit. Uh, Battlefield 1, 84 frames per second. So that's pretty impressive. Um, for, and this is for the RTX 2080, I should say, not 1080, RTX 2080, um, which is, uh, not even the highest end. So, um, Destiny 2, 66 FPS, so some good power on games that, you know, are, uh, are popular right now, and if you compare it to the performance you get on GTX, uh, counterparts, like, if you compare the GTX 1080 to the RTX 1080, it's looking like NVIDIA is saying, and it's looking like some other external reviews so far are showing that you're looking at something between like 30 and 50 percent better performance on um the equivalent card but nonetheless nvidia i don't know if you guys uh checked out this stream or whatever i checked out the announcements at gamescom the uh the presser but nvidia stayed really far away from talking about current games they're talking about the future they're talking about ray tracing reflections uh, lighting, HDR, they're they're pushing that narrative. They're not necessarily talking about how the performance is going to improve on games that are currently out. Like this, they put out this slide as damage control, really, because this slide didn't come out right away. Um, but people were saying, oh, you know, there are people out there saying Rise of the Tomb Raider looked awful. People were taking screen grabs of it, and it looked and it didn't look too good. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, it's totally different technology. Now they're fo they're focusing on ray tracing. They're not focusing on, like, you know, resolution. They're saying, okay, we're at, we're at 4K. Like, 4K is the thing. Fine. We're there. We're at HDR. We want to focus on reflections. We want to focus on improved shadows, improved lighting, that kind of thing. Not necessarily improved resolution or not even necessarily improved frame rates, I'm, I'm hearing from some people. So... Kind of a weird focus because they don't even talk in teraflops anymore. Like if you look at the stats on these things, they didn't talk about teraflop numbers. Like we're all talking about teraflops, right? All of a sudden, everybody who is on the Twitter console gaming community is an expert on uh, on teraflops, but they they didn't even talk about teraflops. They're talking about like uh, giga rays. Like that's the that's the new thing, giga rays. It's not teraflops. So I don't know. Kind of some weird announcements. I'm kind of skeptical a little bit at this point in time. Uh, definitely, I don't think worth, uh, you know, huge price hike that these things got because right now you can probably get a GTX 1080 for somewhere in the range of like 500 bucks. And the opening price on them is like, if you're lucky is like seven to seven fifty right now. So, I mean, you're paying like 50% more at least, um, to get the, to get the newer card and, and the performance is, uh, not, you know, not necessarily like 50% extra. That's what people are saying, but no tests have been really done other than internally at NVIDIA. So no one knows who to believe. I don't know what you guys think of this clowns. I, I guess I'll go to you first on this. What did you, uh, what did you take away from kind of like these announcements? Are you, are you looking forward to maybe getting one or what, what's your thought on it? You know, I just, it's great that they keep advancing stuff like this. 
and it's great that they keep trying to push the boundaries, but I just, I feel like the prices are just all over the place, and they keep getting higher and higher, and it just, it kind of makes you just want to buy, like, a mid-level gaming card, like, why not just stick with the 1080 Ti for a while with the way these prices are going? Yeah, uh, that is the argument of a lot of people. Like, the, you're not alone on that, and I think that, um, you know, the advantage of the RTX 1080 over the GTX 1080 Ti being around the same price if you're, you know, if you're lucky to get one at retail right away uh, for the RTX 1080, those are the two cards that compare really close to each other. Um, and... You know, at least on paper, you know, like we don't know how these cards are going to perform on games that don't use like ray tracing and stuff like people are worried because, you know, NVIDIA released these numbers. So you kind of have to trust them on this. But no one really knows at this point in time if games that don't have ray tracing are going to get a huge advantage. Which is kind of weird because you think it's been two years in the making NVIDIA skipped a whole architecture because if you guys remember or knew, um, the the GTX cards are Pascal and then they released the Titan V, which was Volta, which was supposed to be the next technology. And then they completely skipped that for these cards. And now this is touring. So it's like they have been working on this architecture for like 10 years. And now we're at a point in time where they've released them to the public and they've been working on and working on working on them. And now some people are claiming that, you know, it's going to have to, you know, only certain games are going to get huge improvements. Some games are going to get no improvement, which is crazy. Yeah, I mean, they they just need to try to figure out how to lower the prices on these things to make it more affordable. Because they keep doing this, they're just going to seclude some of the market, you know, and it's going to be, and it really is going to become PC elitist at one point. Uh, those that have the money or those that want to expand their credit line. Uh, so, I mean, I just hope that they bring the prices down for the average gamer. Yeah, because right now, I mean, they've advertised the... the Okay, so the RTX 1070, which is like the lower of the high... The lowest of the high end of these cards, for people that don't know. That, that card is... The cheapest you're going to be able to get that out of the gate is 500 bucks. Now, back when I got mine out of the gate for the GTX 1070, so two years ago, uh, it was like, I think I paid like 379 So it's a huge price increase. I mean, I don't know what the percentage of that is, but to, to go from 379 to 500 I mean, that's a pretty big price increase for something that may not be much better for games that I play every day. You may have to have games that use ray tracing. I mean... Undoubtedly, and I, I'm pretty sure Assassin probably didn't watch this because he's been gaming all day, but Assassin, you got to look at the video that they just released of Battlefield 5. Or, I don't know if it's Battlefield 5 or Battlefield 1, but it's a new video they just released of ray tracing on and ray tracing off, and the reflections are, like, insane. Like, the difference in the reflections is just ridiculously, like, realistic. Um, like, what they did is they had a tank that shot a flamethrower... Um, so I think this is Battlefield Five. The, a tank that shot a flamethrower like down the street, and the flame reflections were off all the cars, were off the water on the ground, off the people, off their guns. You know, like the reflections are just so improved, but that doesn't translate necessarily into better performance. Like it's not like you're gonna get like 120 FPS anymore. You know what I mean? It's not like okay, my card only got 30 FPS, and I'm gonna buy one of these, it's gonna get 60. That's not necessarily gonna happen. I think that's the thing that's confusing to people is that, like what Clowns are saying, you got a huge price premium, you're pricing people out of the market, and then you're not going to get the improvement that people are like looking for. People are looking for more frames per second, people are looking for higher resolutions, but instead it's like subtle things really, like reflections, you know? You know, I'm just, I'm just going to bring something up here. Um, we, I mean... All of us on the show saw a ridiculous tweet about Gamergate 2, like, starting up, right? So I think if there was ever a Gamergate 2, it would be over the price of graphics cards. I just want to put that out there. Well, as, as yeah, I mean, as ridiculous as the a Gamergate 2 is going to be, like, that, that I don't think that's going to happen. But as ridiculous as that could be, like, these are the things that are triggering people these days. Like, you, I can't believe how many people during this announcement were, like, not 
talking about how beautiful like the reflections were on their demos. Like they were ta- they were showing demos, the reflections were gorgeous, like oohs, ahs, everything in the crowd. And on Twitter all you're seeing is like Oh, I'm never buying this. It's twelve hundred dollars for the TI version. Like that's ridiculous. I'm never buying this. Boycott them. You know what I mean? Like that. That's the that's the talk. Like it, it, it's. I mean, it's understandable if you don't want to buy it because you can't afford it. You don't do it. But like people are wanting to take the pitchforks to Nvidia because they increase the prices on these things. I mean, I'm not ready to do that. They're gonna get it because there's no competition. AMD Vega cards are like piss. They're terrible. I know because my brother has a Vega 64. It's not very good. <laughs> Um, but like people are going nuts over the pricing on this stuff. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if people boycotted because of, because of something like that, it's, it, at least at the get go, because you know, it's not like the newest, latest, and it's not like 2016. It's not like the 10 series of, of GTX cards where those cards really took gaming to the next level. Like the step up from nine to 10 series was absurd. Like the the fidelity you could get was absurd. Whereas this, it's like very subtle, and people are not rubbed the right way when they're increasing the price like they are, and you might not get the gains that you're looking for. So, assassin, did you see that video on uh, about the battlefield thing or no? No. Oh my god, you got to see it after the podcast. You got to see it because you'll you're gonna be blown away. Because we us be like we notice those things, but there's a lot of people that like will play with the shadows down and stuff. You know, there are a lot of people that don't even care about that. They're just like, where are my FPS? Where's my resolution? Like, those are the go-tos. And these cards, I think, may disappoint people on current games. Like, unless games feature ray tracing, I don't think you're going to see a huge improvement. I mean, NVIDIA is releasing these numbers, and they look great. Like, obviously, 4K HDR, 60 FPS. I mean, it doesn't say that it's at ultra settings. You know, they they cleverly didn't say what settings it was at but nonetheless i mean those are impressive numbers and everyone wants to play at these numbers but at the end of the day like what about games that don't use ray tracing what about games that don't have the drivers like you're it's it's completely different it's like comparing apples to like blood oranges it's like so so different um these two cards they don't even talk about teraflops if you go and look at the specs teraflops aren't even mentioned you have to like dig deep to find how many quote-unquote teraflops it is um so anyway just thought we'd throw that out there um let me see what people are saying in the chat shanzu says the price is a cash grab for miners now i don't know how popular mining is anymore now amd i guess vega cards were really the be all and end all in mining i think um amd's graphics card line was better than nvidia's uh Per dollar, I guess, for, for mining. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, I know a lot of people still do that, but prices for those things, I mean, cryptocurrency is way down as far as I know. But people are still doing it, of course. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see when people get these in their hands how good it is at mining. But nonetheless, oh, the pricing. I wanted to say the pricing. I already said the thing about the 1070 or the 2070, I should say. But if you want... If you want a Founders Edition 2080, you're paying $800 minimum. And the Founders Edition is like an overclocked version, which is going to be the same thing that you get from EVGA or MSI or um, or Asus or Zotac or any of those brands that make the cards like third party. You're going to get the same thing. So you should probably wait unless you're like really, really, really needing this. You're building a new build and, you know, you have the money because... Um, paying eight hundred dollars for a 2080 uh versus like 450 or even 400 i've seen them for the 1080 i mean i would just buy a 1080 if i were you um like i'm looking on google right now digital trends has an article that they just posted um and it's like if you don't need ray tracing you can score a great deal on the gtx 1080 like people are recommending like professional sites are recommending you just keep the card you have or just like buy it the 10 series at a lower cost. But I mean, time will tell who knows time will tell, but yeah, that's, that's, that's that. We'll, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more when, um, you know, firm numbers out by third parties and not by Nvidia. Cause I mean, how can you trust what Nvidia is saying? To be honest, I mean, obviously they want to make it look good. Um, but all right, assassin, here we go. 
the sad state that is Battlefield. Battlefield 5. People that have been living under a rock, or people that actually haven't been living under a rock, you may not know that Battlefield 5 is coming out soon uh, because the marketing has just been not very good. Um, And a lot of people, including, you know, gaming analysts that, you know, look at these things, look at sales numbers, look at pre-orders numbers, give a little bit of a forecast about how these games are going to do. You know, analysts are getting a little worried. (laughs) They're getting a little worried uh, about Battlefield 5 because pre-orders are way down. They're way behind any of the other games coming out next month or the next two months, I should say. Not even just September, but September, October, because Battlefield Five comes out what October like sixteenth, twelfth, fourteenth, something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's like a few days after uh, Call of Duty. Yeah, so it's after Call of Duty, um, in the same month as Red Dead Redemption. You know, it, it's it's a packed month. I mean, then not to mention, uh, you know, the new Assassin's Creed game, which I guess pre-orders have been decently good on uh, because of how good Origins was. Um, but uh, people are worried about Battlefield Five because um, for for a bunch of reasons. Um, but uh, Doug, this guy right here, I got I got to mention this before I let Assassin talk about this. But Assassin uh, will 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 echo the same sentiments this guy has had to say. But he is a senior game analyst at uh, Cohen, which is. Um, you know, a big uh, marketing research firm. They said that EA's Battlefield 5 currently appears to potentially be heading for serious disappointment. It's lagging far behind Call of Duty, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Assassin's Creed and by slightly more than it was two weeks ago in the case of the first two. So translation, it's not picking up speed, and the other two games are. So um, as we get closer to the release date, which is not very good. Um and then he says, if we had to pick one game to be the casualty of a crowded October window, this would clearly be it. So they're very worried about um, how Battlefield's going to do. They're predicting it may be the next Titanfall 2 disaster. Um, Dazarus, UK Dazarus in the chat says, wait for the vault. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm not waiting for the vault. I already pre-ordered this thing. I'm excited as hell from what I've seen. But... Um, not much to see, right, Assassin? I mean, what what do you what do you think about this? Well, I think EA needs to first off stop putting Battlefield in a crowded month. I don't know if they know like it's, uh, when other games are launching, but I feel like a Battlefield game. I think Hardline did this, where they released like the medals kind of in the beginning of the year where there's not, you know, overcrowded games like Call of Duty and Red Dead. And they, you know, they did this with Titanfall 2, where they put Titanfall 2 in between Call of Duty and Battlefield, which led it to die. But, and then, with, especially with the first trailer, it didn't showcase Battlefield 5, right? It showed, like, some of the good stuff that's going to be in the game, but no one, you know, no one knows that, that stuff you can do, like rolling and you know, crouch sprinting and all this other stuff because EA is not telling us. They're giving all this information to these YouTubers, which they came out and said that they knew more than, like, you know, other people because EA just shoved all the information down the throat and decided, you know, like I said, give them all the information to tell us instead of, you know, the developers telling us, which is a terrible, terrible thing. Okay, before, before, okay, let's just stay on that point for one second because I think this is important because, um, because I think there's a direct comparison to be made on this point to the way Call of Duty's been handled, right? Because, um, in terms of Call of Duty, in terms of, um, no, I don't know if all three of the studios have been as vigorous in doing this, what I'm about to say, but I know, um, I know uh, this time around for for Black Ops Four, um, and last time around for Black Ops Three, there were there were live streams uh, with developers, with community managers. There's been um, there's been a lot of transparency. There's been uh, 
uh, very publicized events that people could watch the people who actually made the game talk about it and tell us what's new and tell us what's great about it and why we should buy it. And here's Battlefield having nothing of the sort and just resorting to who they perceive to be more popular YouTubers taking on the task. And it's really making it look like that they're not interested in it. It's making it look like, at least to me, it's making it look like that, uh, you know, they think it can just sell itself because of how, you know, Battlefield 1 did pretty well, Battlefield 4 did pretty well, um, you know, Hardline not so much, but, uh, you know, they, they, I think they think that people are just, the, the fans will come, the fans will come, they don't need to, you know, beg anyone, they don't need to show up, they don't need to show anyone anything, they'll let... Uh, you know, not necessarily free marketing because we know it's not free necessarily, but they'll go the cheaper route and just go for YouTube instead of, you know, doing it themselves. I mean, isn't that, what do you think about that? Oh, I mean, with about like if you compare the battlefield one and battlefield five trailers, the first trailers that were shown, but I think battlefield one did a very good job of hyping up the game. They had a good song to go with it. They showed him like a bunch. I think it was even longer. You know, it, it just it got people hyped. I think that you know, that's the point of the trailers is to get people hyped. Then you go to Battlefield Five, you know, you see um you know, the the dead horse on the car or whatever. You see the the lady with the prosthetic arms and you know, with the sniper rifle, which is a whole different situation with the lady people you know, um soldiers. Um, and then the, the customization, and then, you know, then you get to this, you know, to the end of the trailer, and while it looks cool, it doesn't show what Battlefield is, and for maybe people looking in, they're thinking, oh, Battlefield is taking more of a Call of Duty approach, when in fact, you know, you watch a YouTuber play, you know, the Alpha, which they had two of, it looks totally different, and that's, you know, one of their problems that they're just having. Yeah, you look at you look at the YouTube fit, footage from like um, Jack Frags and people like that, and you you check out the first trailer, you check out the you know any of the stuff uh, EA has shown in terms of trailers, and then you see about how the game is playing, and it's like wow, I did not expect that. You know what I mean? It's like wow, I did not think from what I saw in these trailers that you'd have this, that, and the other thing. Like it's. If it weren't for the YouTubers, you would have no idea about cool new features like you already a few like you already mentioned, but others that I'm kind of looking forward to, like being able to tow like AA guns or stationary weapons or, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, different ways of vaulting and uh, in the destruction taking a whole new level of uh, not only like damage from the outside but implosion from the inside as well and. Um, you know stuff like that you know you don't even you don't even think about stuff like that if you look at those those trailers and then uh it's like oh that's kind of cool um if i went on youtube to check this out then i'll find it out but if i don't then you know i'm thinking battlefield 5 is like not that interesting to be honest yeah, you know, and they 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 got to just stop giving the YouTubers like all this information. Like obviously, a bunch of people are watching streams and watching YouTube these days more than you know anything else. But again, you know, you go to you go to E three or watch you know the E three or Gamescom, and you see this like and you know like if you're you know forty years old, you you don't watch YouTube. You you know you're not you're not into that type of thing. You watch this like. You're not interested. I mean, you might be if you're a Battlefield veteran, but, you know, someone who plays Call of Duty, it's definitely not giving you a reason to switch. Yeah. Yeah, and you can't and you can't rely on people coming to get your game anymore. Like, you can't do that. I understand that the media exists, like Twitch, Mixer, YouTube. Uh, you know, the stuff exists. Like, they're broadcasting esports and TV. I understand that it exists the media exists for people to come seek you out more than ever. But then again, it also, it can be the flip way of the flip side. The, the media exists for you to push harder in multiple avenues to ensure that your message is being seen. And the messaging is bad from, from EA, the messaging's bad. Um, 
if you count on YouTubers to push your message, YouTubers have wildly different opinions. You can't, I mean, it, Gone are the days where I think, well, I think, I mean, I may not be right because maybe it still is occurring, you know, in backdoor deals, but gone are the days where you can just like message a YouTuber and tell them exactly what to say. And that's that, you know, the, the transparency on that kind of stuff is huge now and people make a huge deal if, if YouTubers aren't transparent now. We've talked about that in the show a ton where people get in trouble for not being transparent and uh, tr with transparency comes honesty and with honesty comes opinionated people. And if you are depending on YouTubers to push your image, when you have all these different ways of pushing your own image, like you're, it's just going to fail. I mean, it's just going to fail. Even, even if like you say, YouTube is the one of the most popular ways to get gamers attention. It still doesn't matter because, you know, uh, giving access to multiple YouTubers comes with multiple opinions and multiple ways of the same thing being shown. Like how many reviews do you watch of games where the same feature is talked about like five different ways, you know? Yeah. And it doesn't help like some of these features that, uh, the YouTubers had, on um, pretty much, you know, before the battlefield launch trailer went out, uh, they're not even available in the alpha. Like, there was one that they talked about where you could drag your, you know, fallen comrades to safety before you revive them. Like, right, right. That, that's a cool thing that is in a Battlefield game, and it's not even present in the Alpha. Right. Like, how are people going to, you know, they could talk about it, but how are they going to show it, see how it works, you know, get feedback, you know, have, you know, other people, because they're going to forget about it. They're going to... You know, they're going to watch Jack Frag's YouTube video on, on the day one of the trailer drop. And then now they're going to watch it, and they're just going to be like, they're, they're going to be like, what? What's this feature? And then the beta is going to come out like, oh, I, I think I heard something about this. Or, you know, right. when the game comes out, you know, and they get it years later or months later. They're going to just forget about these things. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. And okay. then one thing we haven't really touched on just a little bit yeah. was like all the EA's trailers is all about customization. I oh think we kind of get the God. picture after one of like the 10 videos they posted. We get it. You can customize head to toe all your people, all your guns, all your vehicles. You you get, you know, I, I, I think they want to push it just a little bit that saying that there's no loot boxes you get for playing the game. There'll probably be direct purchases like you see in Fortnite where you spend a bunch of money and you'll get the item without, you know, having that RNG. But I mean every single trailer having that in there, that that's a bit much. Yeah, they're thinking that that's they're thinking that, that is like the missing elements of Battlefield that's like holding some people back. They're thinking that that is uh like they they're seeing how people are responding to Battlefield 1 and trying to translate that into the next game and saying, okay, what's missing from Battlefield 1 that's, like, holding us back in the genre? And I don't even necessarily think it's holding us back, but I'm playing devil's advocate a little bit here and saying that uh, that's, like, the missing thing, right? I mean, a lot of shooters have customization options. Battlefield, not so much. Like, Battlefield, you have skins for your guns that you can unlock and... Um, I mean, yeah, I guess that's kind of cool, but minorly noticeable out in the battlefield. Like, the the in the customization things in Battlefield Five that they're talking about. I mean, they're kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie, they're kind of cool. But once you show them like a million times and not talk about your gameplay, it's like you're making a cool thing into shit. You know? Yeah, it it, it shows that maybe they put like. Let's say like a hundred hours into making the game, which clearly they they did not they did not do that. But let's just say they, it shows that like they did ninety hours of customization, right. like ten hours of you know gameplay or you know performance and or QA testing or what you know just other things. And it's just it's it's annoying. Right. Yep. Real quick to the chat before we get a clown's opinion on this. Supersonic Station says, I don't like it when they say don't like it, don't buy it. They need to be careful with their PR. That sounds like, uh, oh, you don't have an internet connection? No problem. Uh, we got a console for you. It's called the Xbox 360. How'd that go? <laughs> um, yeah, that went bad. 
but uh let me see what else is being said here um he also says earlier i missed this one battlefield people will still buy battlefield cod will still buy cod yeah that's true but the whole name of the game especially in a crowded market right now is is trying to convert people and i think battlefield one was so successful like you know Say what you want about the player numbers dwindling. I mean, they are dwindling a little bit. And Battlefield 4 is still pretty popular for being a game that's four years old. But uh, say what you want about that. But, um, I mean, people really did like Battlefield 1. And I think Battlefield 1, for all intents and purposes, for EA, was a huge success. And you can't just ride those court those coattails. You have to, like, you know... You know when they say the only way you can go is down? Well, maybe that's true. I, I mean, I don't know. But you got to do everything you can to make that not true. Um, but um, Invader says, Invader Gaming says, maybe if their messaging wasn't terrible and didn't belittle the player base, things wouldn't be so bad. I mean, pff, I don't know. Sometimes when you're on top, you, you lose a lot of your uh, common sense. Uh, that's happened a lot of times in the industry. Um, Sony, I mean, look at Sony's done that PS2. They did the same thing with, uh, with PS3. Um, I mean, Microsoft did it with the 360. It's like when you're, when you, uh, with the 360 after they, uh, you know, when they, when they launched the Xbox one, uh, the original Xbox one, um, you know, it's a, it's, it's a problem. I mean, it, and EA can't just ride the coattails, but Whatever, everyone's giving them shit for Battlefield Five, and I hate that because I really, I really think it's gonna be great, and I'm really looking forward to it. But you can't deny that the hype is down for this thing. So, yeah, uh, they, they they need a good, they need to release. I think, not, well, not this week, obviously, but like closer to the beta, a really good beta gameplay trailer. Then they need to be like live streaming the crap out of it between like now and. And until the uh, EA access, you know, just pushing trail not like every week push a trailer out, but you need to start pushing out something that's that's good. You can't just be customization, customization, and then you know after the launch of Battlefield Five, you're gonna get free DLC for this like Tides of War or whatever they keep on saying. Right. I mean, it's no. I mean. <sighs> They have a month and a half, you know. You can you can finish out strong and get some people to pre-order. I mean, people can people pre-order games these days up until like the day of. So I mean, or the day before, I should say, the eve, I should say. Um. Anyway, clowns, what are your uh, what are your thoughts on this? I feel like me and Assassin have just been bickering back and forth. You know, I I think the biggest problem Battlefield has is that they can't secure themselves and show that they are the superior game. And I mean that because look at the launch of Battlefield 4 and look at all the rubber banding. And then look at the DLC and then the rubber banding got worse. And then there were issues when Battlefield 1 first launched with connecting and parties. And then when they did the updates for the game, like recently, there was party issues again. So I think that the problem here is that they just can't prove to gamers and fans that, hey, we're going to launch perfectly, no problems. Uh, you're not going to have to worry about rubber banding. Like, I mean, nobody's forgot about that rubber banding. Right. That was terrible. Right. Even Xbox was giving out refunds for it. So they just have to prove that there's going to be no technical issues, that their net code is going to be great off the launch. Um and maybe that's why they keep showing you guys customization so that it uh, keeps your mind off it. They can hide it, yeah. I mean, yeah, this is what this has plagued a lot of games. I mean, uh, look at, like, Halo Master Chief Collection. Fucking shot that thing down to oblivion, and that has almost every Halo in it. It's, like, the perfect thing that... I think it's the perfect... You know, people shit on remasters, people shit on remakes, but that was, like, the perfect chance for Microsoft to capitalize on the remake slash remaster boom that happened at the beginning to middle of this gen, and look, it's just being rectified now. Like, September 1st, we're getting the 4K update, um, and we're getting an update to matchmaking and all this stuff to fix all this stuff, and, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe it's better, you know, Battlefield's usually on, like, a biannual thing, right? So, Battlefield 4 came out four years ago, Battlefield 1 was, what, two years ago, right? Um, what was it two years yep. ago? Um, 
Yeah. So maybe maybe it's worth it. Maybe they got to pull like a Ubisoft and go like three years, if that would secure the hell out of the matchmaking and all that and all that stuff. Um, and and they can they can listen. They maybe they can like pull at the beginning of that period. They can like pull people and see what people want because Supersonic Station is in here saying you know do Vietnam for the love of God. Some people are arguing that the reason this is happening is because they're going to World War Two. People are like, oh, no one wants World War Two. Like you know, screw World War Two. That's why this is happening. I don't agree with that. But if people are saying that, and you know, maybe. Maybe they they have to just sit back and and take the feedback and and then start anew. I mean, this Battlefield Five. There's no way this has been in produ- in development before Battlefield One was. So, longest this has been in development, I would say, is like three, maybe two and a half, maybe three years at the very most. And then here's Invader Gaming in the chat just posted they need Battlefield com- uh, Bad Company Three. That'll bring back the hardcore. Yeah, I mean, people are calling for that. People are saying, you know, where's Bad Company Three? That's what would People draw people in. That's what would generate the hype. But you know, I think Battlefield you know, Five can generate the hype too. I just they just haven't done I, it. I want to say to Invader Game and see. I wasn't around during the Bad Company days of Battlefield. Um, but let me ask you guys this: when when Bad Company Two was around, was there netcode issues? Was there connection issues? Rubber band? Uh, I came late into the Bad Company Two era, probably like a year before Battlefield Three came out. Yeah, um, uh, I'm, not, I'm not too sure. You know, even at the beginning, it, it it like maybe the very beginning it wasn't very good, but I mean it was ironed out pretty quickly. I mean that game, for all intents and purposes, is very stable. Uh, you know, I don't know if they had dedicated so, servers on that thing, so maybe that was part of it. But you know, I think it might have been peer uh, ho- peer hosted still, but that could be you know a reason why people are calling for like bad company 3 is because they remember you know how great bad company 2 was that you know they didn't have issues on that like they did uh, bf4 um and right. it brings back good nostalgic memories yeah. at the same time so i mean solid net code fun times good memories no issues you know i mean that all makes a great game right there yeah, but some of the devs came out and asked what made Battlefield Bad Company too good because they don't even know. So, like, so I don't know if they can even live up to the hype of Bad Company Three, knowing that they don't even know what made Bad Company too good. Maybe the maybe the the name is enough, and maybe just like I don't know, maybe going back to that storyline or something. I don't even know if it was the storyline. It's just. Um... And Daz says in the chat, this chat is full of bad company. Wow, jeez. Um, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe it's part of what, I, what Clowns is saying. Like, the good old days of just, like, jumping on with your friends and not having a problem and, and you know, um, just just getting it done. You know what I mean? Just gaming and not thinking about all these issues that just arise in gaming and online gaming these days. You know, as, as far as online gaming has it, progressed, it's just like... You know, we've got like on consoles, we've got like 64 player servers. We've got one versus 99, you know, on Battle Royale games. We've got like ridiculous amount of people on screen at one time. And, uh, you know, that's an improvement in of itself. But yet, you know, people are nostalgic about like the 5v5 days of Modern Warfare 2 or the 5v5 or the 6v6 days of Bad Company or 8v8 or whatever it is, you know? Um, I don't know. They, they need to take a page from Black Ops 4. As much as it's getting shit for it, they need to remove that mul- or not multi- but, uh, campaign because Battlefield uh, campaigns are pretty mediocre. They're probably the worst FPS campaigns I've ever played. And then they stop. They, they need to take away. I think there's going to be a co-op mode in Battlefield uh, 5. They need that gone. And they, they should just stick to a multiplayer only game. Yeah. Put more resources to it. Yeah, see that's see that's the thing. Um that that's the thing about what that's one of the things that made Bad Company two and one good is that the campaign was excellent. You know, that was one of the things that people remember um being very, very good about that of those games. And I think the other battlefield games have such bad campaigns that it's just like what I mean, what's the next best Battlefield campaign? Like Battlefield 3's campaign wasn't very good. Battlefield 4's wasn't very good. I didn't even See, finish Battlefield 1's. I mean, Hardline was probably the next best. 
See, I hated Back Home Only Two's campaign. I thought Battlefield 3's, uh, I think the first half of Battlefield 3's campaign was good. Hardline, I think, was more consistent on being tolerable, but like Battlefield 1, like it was hard to fully enjoy it because of the war stories. Like you started getting into it, and they're like, oh, it's over. On to the next story. Yeah, yeah, no consistency, yeah. Yeah. To me, the only good part about Battlefield 3's campaign was that, like, first level or second level where, like, you were going through the that, like, skyscraper with all the glass and stuff. I, for the time, I thought that was awesome, but that's Battlefield 3, right? Not 4? I'm trying to think. I believe it was... I'm pretty sure it was three. three. I, it's been a very, very long time. Oh my god! That, that campaign. I know in Battlefield Three you had like that tank mission, which I thought yep. was fun. Oh yeah. Yep, and then yep. you got the jet, the jet one, um, somewhere in there. And then I think you like had to attack a certain city and stuff. Like yeah, you know, it was like it was, as a war, or whatever. And I thought that was that was fun. And then really all I remember. Yeah, I remember. I remember that. I remember that mission in the skyscraper uh, with the glass because I thought that that was so cool. How you can like shoot through all that stuff and all the glass shatter and everything. I thought that was really, really next level. I remember that Battlefield Three was just so been, next level. It might have been Battlefield Four because I think the skyscraper was uh, almost an exact copy of the. Uh, uh, what was that map in Battlefield Four that the skyscraper would fall? I think it was like um, based off of that, that skyscraper. Siege of Shanghai, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Stick says Battlefield Four campaign was okay. I, I wasn't a fan of that. I was felt tacked on. Like, yeah, they didn't have time to, to make up. Yeah, I mean that's what a lot. That's what a lot of them are. That's that's the thing. Like that's why people are okay with FPS. Uh, you know, multiplayer focused FPS games. Getting rid of the the single player like i feel like no one's talking about that black ops 4 campaign anymore like that was such a huge outrage and then the beta it, it's, came st it's still brought up like you, you hear black ops 4 like oh i'm buying that like how can you buy it it has no campaign like you you see that occasionally just look at the the twitter feed of uh of a treyarch uh, post or a call of duty post it's like no campaign no buy the fact is no one yeah, plays people... the campaign yeah, those... and you can see the percentage of how many people own the game game you know beat the first mission yeah dude those people are buying it i mean these people are talking a big game right now they're buying it i mean uh, we're not gonna get into this right now because i could go on forever but i mean black house 4 is excellent and i th people are gonna buy it i mean they're just gonna buy it. they're gonna play blackout if blackout's like half decent uh and runs really well the, the people are buying it whether it's gonna campaign or not like people are talking a big game about the campaign you're right. Like no one has any of the single player achievements. A lot of people don't even touch it. It's true. It's true. But all right, we're gonna move off the topic because we've been talking about this a ton. But let us know in the uh, in the comments, chat, hit us up on Twitter. Let us know about what you guys are thinking about um, about what the state of Battlefield Five is right now. Because sadly, I think it's not very good. But um, it'll do fine. It'll do all right. It's not gonna be as bad as Hardline. But um, it's definitely not gonna, it's not, it's not looking as good as Battlefield 1, I'll tell you right now. Um, alright, let's move on into what, uh, oh, not that, that was the wrong slide. Let's move on into Inside Xbox. So, a lot of stuff got talked about by Microsoft at Gamescom. Uh, Jerry's out on whether any of that stuff was good. Um, they showed a bunch of games, uh, a lot of stuff we already knew, hardly anything we didn't, um, Got some uh, some new information about a bunch of games, um, like Fallout seventy six. We got some new information about. We got some, uh, you know, some some gameplay footage of Forza Horizon four. Some new uh, information about what the multiplayer is going to be like. The team el the team elements of multiplayer on Forza Horizon four. Some new information about that. Some new DLC of, uh, that looks pretty good in my opinion for State of Decay two. Uh, kind of like a horde mode for for that game. Um, uh, PUBG is going to be getting a uh, full release next, next month. Um, uh, getting that 1.0 release out of, out of a preview program, out of beta. Um, what else? I mean, everything else I feel like we already pretty much knew. I mean, 
what did you guys think of it inside Xbox? It, it was an hour too long. It should not have ran for like over two hours. Uh, the segments that were really long, like PUBG, wasn't really needed. They could have just talked about 1.0 and, you know, and stuff coming. That would have been fine. Um, DayZ, I think, it didn't show great, but I think it piqued my interest more than it probably would have. Um, I wish they showed like gameplay and stuff, not just fucking uh, terrain and stuff. Um, but what stole the show for me, which was like the first thing that they showed besides the tour of Germany, was a hunt showdown. Oh, I f- you know what? I f- the rest of the show was so boring. It- I forgot all about that. I forgot all about that they even yeah. showed that. But yeah, that looked good. Um, I've been wanting that for a long time on console because I wanted to buy it on a PC, and I keep thinking like, who am I going to play this with? Um, but now right. it's on console. I'm gonna go. I, I'm definitely gonna go for it. That, that looks like a really cool game. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. Way too long. Um, as usual. I mean, fuck. It's what is this like the fourth one they've done? Fifth one? Something like that? And uh, same mistakes. Same same shit. Different day. It's just it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And Gamescom. Yeah. Everyone was like, wait for Gamescom. Everyone was like, wait for Gamescom. Wait for Gamescom. Right. Um. But, like, we've waited for Gamescom, and, like, was there anything about Crackdown? I don't think there was anything about Crackdown. Um, I don't think there was, I mean, Battlefield Five, like we just talked about. Um, we'll, we'll talk about in a, in a second about the new console that they're, uh, the, the special edition console, which is cool. But in terms of the game, nothing really. Metro, they, they showed some gameplay about Metro. Uh, that looked really good. Um, but... You know, it's all stuff we already knew. There were no surprises, really. I mean, other than the Hunt Showdown, um, and maybe the release date of the of the, of the Master Chief Collection 4K update. Um, but I keep calling it the 4K update, but I shouldn't because there's a lot more than that. There's matchmaking improvements, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but I keep saying 4K update because that's what it's like. You know, I, I'm thinking about Xbox One X. I'm thinking about 4K update, but. Um, and, you know, we saw Ori in the Black Forest, Will of the Wisp gameplay. I mean, great. Um, you know, uh, state, the State of Decay thing, I think it was pretty cool. I already said that. But uh, that, that's I think that's going to kind of get me into the game. Um, the, you guys play a lot of Sea of Thieves, uh, Assassin and Clowns. Were you impressed with the Sea of Thieves stuff? I thought that was kind of boring. Yeah, well, I think Clowns and I are at a point where Sea of Thieves is not really dead to us. But, like, we got to a point where we hit Pirate Legends. Athena's quests are extremely boring. And, like, we're kind of just sick of, I mean, a lot of people probably argue with us, but, the, like, the forced cooperation of certain things, like the, the DLC that's going down now, like, yes, you can probably do it solo, but, like, it's more of the time thing and trying to get people together. And it's just... It, it's annoying, and I, I think what they showed, like the island and volcanoes, seems promise. But and uh, the new merchant and items they're bringing to that, <laughs> which are, you know, Ooh, piqued my interest. But again, like they'll probably screw it, screw it up some way, you know, in some way, shape, or form. Sorry, my dog just went crazy, but I did. I think we heard everything you said. But yes, I. <sighs> It's sad with the Sea of Thieves thing because, you know, it. like, I know they were trying to stun with that announcement. Like, I know that announcement was supposed to be good because they were like, okay, September 19th, like, this thing's coming way sooner than anyone thought. Like, who thought that thing was coming this soon, right? And they're like, oh, it's coming. Yeah, I was saying the end of the September. Yeah, at the earliest, like, yeah. Somewhere in the middle. At the earliest, yeah. like, you know, they said, I know they've, they've kind of hinted at September before, but I thought, you know, that was going to get delayed. For some, I don't know why I thought that, but I just had that in the back of my mind. And now it's like September 19th, okay, way sooner than I thought. And even that announcement couldn't save the hype. I mean, it's just, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Sea of Thieves. I don't know what Microsoft thinks is going on with Sea of Thieves because, you know, it is fun. It's cool. Like, I, you know, when I want to just relax and chill, I'll play that. Um, and you know, I wanna, I do want to get back into playing that in short spurts. But it's not like I'm gonna dump like five hours in that thing. It's not like I'm gonna, uh, 
you know, it's not like I'm going to go go into Sea of Thieves as my game of choice after a long day at work and, like, plow away at getting, um, I can't remember the name of it, the 50s across the board. What's the name of it? Pirate Legend? Yes, Pirate Legend. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm all set on that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I know you guys are kind of already there, so it's not, it's not, you know, you can't really... You know, you have you hit that, so there's nothing for you to play for. But there is something for me to play for, I guess. But it's, like, not enticing enough, even with all this new stuff. It's sad. It's sad. Um, clowns, any thoughts on any inside Xbox stuff, like games shown or anything like that? Is he not uh, here? Oh, he's here. You know, I, for, I forgot that Xbox was even at Gamescom. I mean, did they have a show there? Because <laughs> what I... Re- because I, what I remember is that Major Nelson was talking a lot, and they cut the camera on him, like, twice. Uh, and then he touched some fancy car with gloves on. I thought maybe he was paranoid of germs. And then um, PUBG, lots of PUBG. Like, I mean, come on, get over PUBG already. Either buy the damn thing exclusively or just get over it. Uh, it's time to to move on. There's There's so many games out there. And I feel like Xbox has focused way too much attention on PUBG. The game is, is I mean, last time I checked, it was losing player base. I'm not sure if it still is. Oh, yeah, definitely. But it can't even run. run. It's not even running as good as Fortnite. And Fortnite's more like a comical, cartoonish game. I mean, I mean come on, man. Get get the game running good. And then, and then back it up and talk about it exclusively. But... Just move on from PUBG. I'm so tired of PUBG this, PUBG that. And then everybody gets all mad and defends PUBG because it's on Xbox. The thing never even came to Xbox, but people still defend PUBG. You know what I mean? Like, yep. Yep. come on. Xbox, get over PUBG. And then, you know, the Sea of Thieves stuff, like Assassin said, I think uh, we're kind of fed up with the forced cooperation. Um, it's not fun to be forced to cooperate with other people. Uh, and we get told all the time, like, hey, you know, just get an alliance. Hey, you know, just bring on crying tears chest. Well, you know what? We don't want to search for four hours looking for a chest of sorrows to put it on a cursed ship and then fight off four different cursed ships and then have these forced friends sink us. Like, it, it's pointless. I mean, the, you know... <sighs> It's so frustrated, man. Like, I, I saw people I saw people on Twitter about this forced cooperation thing. I saw people on Twitter being like, I don't know why everyone's bitching because I just took down a skeleton or two skeleton ships by ourselves, like a four man crew, no problem. And of course they use the the fucking um the thing you just said, the the crying chest there. The chest of sorrows. Of course they use that. But like not everyone just has a chest of sorrows laying around, like you just said. Like <laughs> I mean, shit. It's well, like not everyone has four people. Like most of the time, clowns and I are just by ourselves. Like until like later in the day or whatever. Like we'll have more people, but for us, like we. I mean, we have stories of being chased for like three hours because the whole server just wanted to kill us. No, for yeah. no reason. Just be like, hey, there's a there's a sloop there. Oh, it's uh, it's got wood. Let's uh, kill it. Like some stupid reason like that and everyone else is sort of like oh we saw someone oh they became our friends now we're getting married or something you know like some weird story yeah yeah like, yeah, yeah right right <laughs> right it, 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 people that's the thing about sea of thieves like people have different experiences and you can get very lucky with the server assignment and you could be like that guy that had pirate legend like within a few weeks or whatever it was. I can't remember how fast he had it, but he had it insanely fast and he had people helping him out with chests and with skulls and stuff. He had, he had people, uh, you know, he was able to get into servers where no one attacked him and stuff, but that is the, that is not the norm. Like if you've played sea of thieves, you know that, and you know that, you know, these people saying that the forced cooperation isn't a thing. Like it's a thing. It's a thing. Like, you're, yeah, you're not gonna take down two skeleton uh, boats by yourself on a uh, galleon by yourself, like every single time. You're not because you're not gonna have a chest of sorrows every single time. It's like I, I hate when people make that that reference that you know they're able to do it themselves. So people just suck. Like I hate when I see that on Twitter because it's like 
dude, you use an exploit, number one. It's like you che- like cheesed it. You know, remember when people like, like cheese and crota? It's not the same thing, but, you know. Yeah, pe- I was just about to bring that up. Yeah, yeah. Pull yeah, the I- Ethernet cord and you, you got to win. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's like not everyone ha- can do these exploits at the drop of a hat. Like, see, these just doesn't work with like that. I'm sorry. Um, real quick, going to the chat. Takiki nerd says, "See, these got to add a campaign to get me to go back." Yeah, I think you know. I think low key they're working on that. I think they've got to be. I think the the you know, as I love Rare. I think Rare is an incredible studio. I think they've done an incredible thing with Sea of Thieves in terms of. Um, setting the groundwork for a game like this, and I think that the the atmosphere is there for them to make this game something special. And I think they've got to know that the writing's on the wall; that they've got to come up with some sort of campaign that's meaningful. Um, you know, maybe some like talking uh, NPCs, maybe like something, something to get people excited again. Um, but. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. The, the the focus on like the inside Xbox focus on like PUBG, Sea of Thieves, stuff that, you know, I know Xbox has to push because, you know, Blue Holes their bread and butter, Sea of Thieves is their blood bread and butter, and PUBG, you know, theoretically could have been, you know, the big one of the biggest third party gets in the history of gaming. I honestly still believe that that, that could have been. But and it's not necessarily Microsoft's fault. Like people are saying, whose fault is it? Is it Blue Holes or is it Microsoft's? Like, I think the blame is both ways. I think you know, or is it Rares or is it Microsoft's for Sea of Thieves? Like, it's both. It's both. So I mean, I don't know. Anyway, let's move on because yeah. Oh, good, good clowns, good plus point, good. I was just gonna say that I'm learning too with the Sea of Thieves thing, and then everybody just keeps reiterating the positive stuff. Nobody wants to talk bad about the negative stuff or bring up the negative stuff. And I think that, you know, we just keep reiterating the positive without looking at the bad stuff in Sea of Thieves. And if we just keep ignoring the bad stuff, it's never going to get better. So, I mean, there's a lot of fans just defending Sea of Thieves. And, you know, I love Sea of Thieves. But there's things that need to get better for it to be a great game at this point. Yep. Yep. Absolutely agree. And this is coming from, and people are going to, you know, m- maybe in the comments or on Twitter, they're going to be like, oh, like, you guys don't know what you're talking about, blah, blah, blah. I mean, these are two guys here. I can't claim it myself. I've put some hours in, but nothing like these guys have done. I mean, these guys are diehards. And on Sea of Thieves, the, you know, these guys are authorities and know that, you know, you can keep trying to love it. And there are people out there that will make their own story and, and can use a uh, – and can use a sandbox and all that, you know, it is a sandbox, you make it, whatever, and blah, blah, blah. But, like, you know, that's not for everyone. So it's time to it's time to realize that it's not for everyone. It's time to realize that you're getting shat on by a lot of the community for missing some very key things. And I understand that, you know, people say it doesn't matter, like, they're making their own game, whatever. Like, to a point, I do agree. Like, they can do their own thing. It's their intellectual property, and there are people that do enjoy it, and they do have that subset, and there are a lot of active players still on it, and blah, blah, blah. But, like, sometimes you have something that will could just be so much bigger than it actually is, and you're missing it because, uh, you know, you're you're dead in your ways, and you, you know, it... Maybe it's great for some people. Like you know, there are people out there that still swear by the game. They play play it every night. They get their galleon going, and you know they have a ton of fun. And to those people, like you know, keep living the dream, dude. Like keep keep playing that game and keep enjoying it. But at the same time, like just because it's good doesn't mean it can't be great for everyone. So, all right, nope. there's gonna be a point where uh, Scotland uh, Bones or whatever that Ubisoft Pirate Games would come out, and no one's gonna, you know, play. Well, there'll probably be people still playing Sea of Thieves, but you know, it's gonna take overtake all the pirate talk. And when Sea of Thieves announces something, they're really like, "See of who?" Like, yeah, yep. That that's if Skull and Bones is good. I mean, it looks awful, but right. Who knows? Who knows? Like, but you know what? P- you know what? It's gonna get it's gonna get more hype than it deserves, maybe because I, well, I don't know that. I shouldn't say that, but it could potentially get more hype than it actually deserves because people have Sea of Thieves on their t- on on the tip of their tongue, you know, and people are like looking for uh, 
a store a more of a story experience and i feel like with skull of bones i'm gonna get it even if it, the mechanics are not very good you know even if it's generic yeah um but anyway let's move on they announced a lot of uh accessories and by accessories i mean hardware um and they didn't announce any new consoles like they didn't announce like the xbox 2 or like the cloud service or anything like that but um we're running a slideshow right now they announced four consoles um and i think you know let's just go through this really really quickly because i mean other than the battlefield one it's literally just consoles with games for a discounted price in my opinion um, but yep. all of them, you know, it's, it's not just like the console with just the game. It's the console game with, you know, uh, EA access. Uh, if you're, if you buy the battlefield bundle, it comes with EA access. It comes with battlefield, uh, 1943. It comes with the deluxe edition of the battlefield game. And it comes with, uh, a special edition battlefield console that has like a little bit of gold on it. Kind of like the project Scorpio has a little bit of gray on it. Um, the, this one has a little bit of gold. I can't remember what they call that. Um, what's the name of that? They call it something. Gold Rush. Gold Rush. The Gold Rush console. Yeah, so Gold Rush, yeah. you'll be able to you'll be able to see that it's a little bit different. So that one I think is the pick. I think if you're interested in Battlefield, you haven't pre-ordered it, and you don't have an Xbox One X, that is uh, the one you want to get because it comes with live, comes with EA access, comes with Battlefield, the digital deluxe version, which is an eighty dollar value. It comes with. Uh, Battlefield 1943, which if you can find a server, is still a lot of fun. Um, and Xbox Live Gold, I think I mentioned that. Five hundred bucks. Uh, Assassin thoughts on uh, on that console? I thought Battlefield 1943 was a weird choice to throw on there because I don't know if anyone's playing that game at this point. Yeah, that's why I said I, if you like, can find I, a popular I, server. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I get it why it's in there, because it's a World War II game, and there was, like, you know, they're going back with, you know, you know World War II, Battlefield Five, but they should have done, like, Battlefield One at this point, like, you know, get more people in there, I know no one's going to be playing Battlefield One if you, you know, if you picked up that console, you're going to be playing Battlefield Five, but, you know, it makes it more of a value than, you know, 1943 at this point. Yeah, yep, yep. I agree, but you know what? Honestly, like, maybe money-wise, they were able to just, you know, throw in a copy of 1943 and say, fuck it. Um, but real quick in the chat, uh, WDFC Podcast says, um, he's looking for a Fallout 76X bundle, but was hoping for a custom Forza Horizon 4X. And as you can see in the slideshow, uh, there is a Fallout 76X bundle that comes with the game and a month of golden game pass of 500 bucks. So nothing really custom about that. Um, it's just a regular Xbox one X with the game and with those two services. Um, and for your Forza horizon bundle, uh, not a custom console. Like we probably would have expected, but instead, uh, you get horizon four, you get, um, motorsport seven, which is pretty good. Looks incredible. Um, and you get a 14 day trial of Xbox live and that's for $500 as well. So all these value, all these bundles have value. It's not that it's just that they're not custom. Like the gold rush one is custom. Uh, you know, Xbox has been known, I feel for having custom consoles. And now it's like, they're going away from that and just bundling in and packing things in, you know? Like, at the beginning of this gen, remember, like, the Forza 6 bundle, like, had a special blue console, and the uh, Master Chief Collection 1 was a special, like, grayish blue with, like, all these kind of Halo things on it, and, uh, what else? Uh, they had that, like, green Battlefield 1 console, and, you know, they've had custom consoles left and right, and now it's like, oh, oh we got gears. the Gears one, the Red Gears one, yeah, that one was pretty sick. That controller was nasty that came with it. And then now you've got four consoles. They've announced four bundles at Gamescom. And granted, you're getting value because you're getting the game essentially for free. And they're just generic other than the Battlefield one, which I think is really cool. But Yeah, out of all of them, they should have gave the custom console to Forza. Take, you know, um, like that, I forget the name of the car that's on the cover, but it's, there's like very limited amount of those cars. They could have made a console based on that car. Yeah. You know. Yep. For the Forza, and then just remove Forza Seven if you know that 
is a uh, you know deal breaker. And like, I mean, the game's great, but this is a Forza Horizon bundle. Just put it in there. And they have the ability to do it because if you go to PAX, you go to E3, you go to these uh, cons. Like I took a bunch of pictures of them when I was at PAX this year. They've had custom consoles. Like you could enter c- competitions to win these very custom consoles. And we've talked about it on this show um, before. We've definitely talked about why they don't make them because they're probably the value of, of making those consoles. It's probably cost a lot more money. But in the end, people are going to buy these things. So, I mean, have the have the availability. But this is, like, cheap, you know? Like, I can't really fault Microsoft for doing this because you are getting some sort of value. But at the same time, it's like, I look at a Tomb Raider bundle and I'm like, yeah, I'm getting Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but that console is just like the regular one. It's like, why am I buying the bundle other than to get the game for free? Like, look at Best Buy, look at GameStop, look at Amazon. Like, some of these, like, Best Buy recently is like, buy an Xbox One X and get a game for free. I'm essentially getting the bundle right there. You know what I mean? It's like, nothing is special about this. Yeah. Um, they could have uh, took as much as we hate it a Sony approach. Yeah, with no stickers on it. Yeah, no. stickers are better than nothing, man. I I'll knock. Listen, we were. Yeah. I mean, as primarily Xbox gamers, we were in a position to shit all over Sony for their custom sticker consoles, and now look where we're at. It's like, you know, it, now we're like wanting stickers for fuck's sake. Um, or if you don't want to put the stickers on the console, give us the stickers. We'll put them. We'll on put the them console. on. We'll put them on. All right. <laughs> Clowns thoughts on these bundles, real quick. You any? Get any thoughts on these? He uh, sent a uh, DM saying he had to eat. Oh, okay. Well, he's gone. So, um, let me see. Stick figure in the chat says custom X consoles would be epic. Yes, people want custom consoles still. Like that is a thing. Make them limited. Just produce like you know. Do, do what Sony's doing, like, produce, like, wh- whatever, produce, like, a million of them or whatever you're doing, like, uh, 500,000, produce them, produce them, drive up the interest, charge, uh, you know, 500 bucks, and call it a day, and get people talking about your console left and right on social media, on YouTube, all this stuff. I mean, look how many unboxings, I mean, granted, that 500 million uh, PS4, that was a special pro- uh a special edition that was a real special edition you know that 50 50 thousand yeah. but look how many people made unboxing videos on that look how much like uh press that generated it's insane like even digital foundry did an unboxing video which they never do you know so crazy like people yeah. want the custom consoles and microsoft knows this because they wouldn't be doing bundles like this if they didn't if they thought that people you know weren't weren't going to potentially buy them because you know, people like free games, but at the end of the day, like I already said, like a lot of these retailers are offering the game for free anyway. So it's not like this is anything really that special, to be honest. What they should do is take uh, a note or whatever, a, a note from uh, their, uh, what is it, their Xbox controller design, you know, thing that you can make. I forget what the name of it is. Yeah, design. And like then. That. Yeah, design lab and some, and then some from like PCs where you can you know go into you know this design lab, customize your entire Xbox, you know how much you know room you know storage you want, how it looks, you know then have like Forza Horizon like you know a set of like decals and stuff and let you put that on there and then you know you know obviously it would be more and more the more you put on there. But it would let you customize your own stuff, and you know you're paying what you want, not just like, boom, here's a Forza Horizon Four bundle with just the game. Or, yeah, yeah. You know, if they did a customization. I yeah, I you know I I've tried to talk to James Shields about this because um, you know I met the guy, very good guy. We've had quite a few conversations, mostly about headphones, to be honest. But. Um, uh, great guy. Um, he's on the accessories team for Microsoft. Um, so technically a member of the hardware team. Um, and he, uh, I've tried to get out of him why they don't do design lab for consoles. And I think like the can answer is that there's not enough interest to produce all those parts. And like, I do kind of agree, but, uh, I mean, I think people would pay like a $50 premium to, to customize a console. It's just how much does it cost? You know what I mean? Like how much does it actually cost? We, uh, we'd have to know that before knowing, you know? Yeah. 
Um, okay, so those are the consoles. Really quick, we're gonna talk about the controllers. Uh, they announced a custom PUBG controller. Uh, this looks all right. Like it actually looks better in pictures than it does in the video. Like when they showed it off in the vids, uh, and they showed it off on uh, Inside Xbox, I thought it looked like dog shit. To be honest, I didn't like the camo at all. Uh, but the D-pad, I guess, is uh, metallic, which is cool. Um, and the triggers have a little bit of a texture to them. So I actually like textured triggers. I think that's a cool idea. I, I like the feel of that. Um, anywhere where you can put grips on a controller, I'm, I'm a fan of. But um, Assassin, what did you think of the PUBG controller? I thought they made the PUBG controller while they had a few too many beers. Because it looks awful, um, especially some of the design. Like they have that uh, that like red X on one of the triggers or something like underneath it, where you don't see it. For uh, you know when you're gonna shoot like the wall or something. Like I I, I don't know, but like I thought that was awful. The uh, blue circle around the left thumbstick. Like I get the meaning of that. That's cool. But like that, it. that I don't think it has a place on the controller because it just i think it looks out of place like it was just there to be there like where, where's the red circle then like yeah yeah you know have have the right joystick be just totally red. red have it be totally red, red. <laughs> yeah like so i, I don't know like i feel like they could have done That's better great. yeah yeah fair enough fair enough um, yeah, I, 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 personally, I think my favorite feature of the thing are the joysticks and, uh, I mean the, sorry, the, the triggers and the blue circle, the directional pad, like take it or leave it. I mean, it's probably feels good to the hand, but in terms of look, you know, take it or leave it. But I do like that blue ring. Uh, this has been done before though. I think Razor did it or, uh, Nakahan or whatever, uh, when they did custom DualShock 4 controllers or custom Sony, uh, PlayStation 4 controllers. Um, they've done the blue ring thing before and I think it looked cool on that and I think it looks cool on this, but I'd have to probably see it in person cause I'll tell you when I saw it in the videos, I didn't think it looked cool. So, um, <clears throat> the better announcement was, and I know supersonic station is going to give me shit for this cause he just said in the chat to stop doing the design lab. But I think the cooler thing was the new design lab features, which uh, were a few like five sets of camo or four or something like that uh, different camo options that you can do and the new shadow option that you can do uh, in the design lab I think the shadow option looks incredible I think the shadow blue and the shadow red are hot um, hot AF uh, lit I should say is that what the kids are saying lit uh, I think those are looking pretty good what did you think about the uh, new design lab stuff I I always loved that uh, blue uh, whatever controller I, I, the shadow I just forgot the name you just yeah you just said it yeah, yeah. The shadow I like I would love to customize a controller with that that uh, that paint or whatever on it like, yeah I just think that's one of the better the best looking controllers out there I would also love to have it on like an elite controller but. Yeah, well, time will tell if that's going to happen. I mean, people have been saying that there's an Elite version 2 coming soon. Like, people are saying that there's some truth behind that rumor, uh, some pretty connected people. I'd be shocked if they're not doing one uh, with a few improvements that people have been looking for on the Elite version 1. And I think that if they're going to do that, I think they should just add it to Design Lab. Fuck it. I mean, why not? Obviously, they've deemed Design yeah. Lab to be a big success, and I think that may have been one of the reasons why they didn't add it uh, with version one is that maybe, um, you know, maybe they didn't think it was going to be a huge success, but I think design lab is a huge success. I think obviously, um, it's doing well for them because they wouldn't be just adding this stuff and, 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 you know, continuing on if it wasn't a success. So, because they could just, yeah, they man, could just it keep it where it was. Take, it would probably take some money from scuff and all those other places where you can, oh, yeah. you know, customize the entire, entire thing of, you know, however you want. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, all right, also, uh, not just Microsoft getting in the controller customization uh, announcements. We've got four new custom controllers from Sony. So we've got the copper one, which is the one I'll be getting. We've got the blue camo. We've got the berry blue and the sunset orange. So four new DualShock, DualShock 4s. They're going to be 65 bucks. 
Uh, you can pre-order them now, I think, on Amazon. Everyone except the copper one, which I'm being told on Twitter by a couple people, including Keith Klein, um, that's uh, who's an Xbox employee, as a matter of fact, that the copper one is a GameStop exclusive initially in the U.S. Um, but what did you think about these things? I mean, I think these controllers are hot. I think these look really, really good. Uh, I forgot what three of them look like. The copper one looked nice. Um, I found that was the better looking one, so that's probably why I only remember that one. Um, I'm kind of glad Sony's doing more of these controllers. I mean, a lot of people gave uh, Xbox or not bet for all these controllers, but it's nice to have options other than you know the custom like God of War one like I have or the Spider-Man ones or. The ugly Black Ops 3 one, which I wonder if they'll do one for Black Ops 4. Probably yeah. not. Probably not. Um, and, and then just these, you know, random colors. I think I think it's nice to have options. Now we just need a PlayStation Design PlayStation Lab. PlayStation Design Lab, yeah. <laughs> and then just have, like, a name right on the touchpad. I think that would be a perfect spot to have our gamer tags or oh, yeah. IDs or whatever they're called. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and the touchpads are... People are like, oh, you can't put anything on those. You can put stuff on those. Um, yeah, people the put stickers. War one right? it has it right on it. Yeah. So you can put stuff. So. Yep, yep. So that's essentially it. I was going to talk about this Xbox All Access thing, but I think we're going to hold off on that until Clowns is back because I want to get him on that conversation. I know he has a few things to say about it, so... Um, We'll talk about Xbox All Access next week. Maybe by then it'll be official. Um, oh, Clowns is back. Clowns, are you back? Uh, yeah, I am back. Sorry, guys. A lot's going on. No problem. Over here, we're in the middle of a move, so I, I appreciate your patience. Um, yeah, but I, I agree with you, Inferno. I mean, uh, if you want to hold off and we can do yeah, yeah. Xbox All next show, we could do a nice opening for it because I think it's going to be good. Yeah, 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 absolutely. We'll hold off on that because, obviously, as you can hear in the background, moving things, and I understand that completely. I'm not even fully moved into my new place yet, so. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that next week. But uh, other than that, I think we are done. People, go back to gaming. Resume your gaming activities. Uh, this podcast is over, so we will uh, we'll and, see you. And, Daz, if you hear, drop that link. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, don't drop that, and be cool all right find us everywhere four guys of quarters search us 4gwq podcast on twitter we'll see you guys next week peace peace bye